Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about where chemotherapy drugs come from. Before I go on, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to our channel. And as always, you can go to yerba.com to see if chemotherapy might be part of what's offered to you as part of your treatment plan. So a lot of people know that chemotherapy drugs are poisons, right? They poison cancer cells. How do we discover these drugs and where do they even come from? Well, the original chemotherapy drugs, the nitrogen mustard type of drugs were discovered after an accident during wartime in the 1940s. Sailors were exposed to nitrogen gas and their white cells went very low and they lived with low white cells for a long time. Later, these drugs, the nitrogen mustard drugs, were found to cure Hodgkin lymphoma and other lymphomas. And in fact, cyclophosphamide, the brand name of which you may know as cytoxin, is one of these drugs. In people with breast cancer, we use much lower doses that are, than are used in the treatment of other cancers. So yes, this is a scary class of drug, but very effective, leads to cure in many cancers, in cancers that were never curable before, and they were discovered by accident. Most drugs are not discovered this way, but rather through very careful study. There's another way that we discover drugs, and that is by collecting specimens from bacteria, from plants, and from animals all over the world, and then they're studied in massive ways against multiple cancer cells. So paclitaxel, the brand name of which is Taxol, and docetaxel, the brand name of which is Taxotere, were discovered in a massive effort by the National Cancer Institute to discover new drugs. There hadn't been new cancer drugs in decades. And these drugs come from the bark of the Pacific yew trees. So specimens were taken from, as I mentioned, multiple plants. The bark of a yew tree was tested against multiple cancer cell lines and found to be highly effective. Now they're made in the lab, they're made synthetically because there's no way the world could keep up with the need to take these specific Pacific yew trees and harvest them for their bark. Other drugs like aribulin, which is used in breast cancer, was discovered from a sea sponge. So the way this is done is again, a massive effort to take products naturally occurring, plants, animals, bacteria, and test them against cancer cell lines, and then eventually to move them into animal studies and then into clinical trials with people. We've covered how we study drugs in another video that you might find interesting to take a look at. Now that we've gotten even more sophisticated in understanding cancer cells and molecules through newer technologies that have developed over the last few decades, we can actually look at what the target looks like. So if we want to understand what we're trying to kill, we develop molecules using very specific technology. The molecules are often designed using 3D imaging and then created after that to affect a particular target. And then the other thing that we can do is understand the mechanism of how cancer cells divide and develop and then develop very specific medications to attack that particular cancer cell. Remember, cancer is not one disease, but rather hundreds of diseases. Even breast cancer itself, there are many different types of breast cancers. So the work that goes into discovering these drugs now is based on a very advanced technology, rarely by accident. And while we're still doing screening as we did in the 90s, drug development right now is very specialized, very time intensive and takes a lot of time to bring these drugs to market. I hope this has been interesting to you. Drop a comment or question below. I know we have lots of people who watch our channel who actually work on discovering chemotherapy and other anti-cancer drugs. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, the field is progressing, of course, not rapidly enough, but this is such an interest to so many of our viewers. Thank you for watching.